namaste, and a very warm welcome. At TSRS, we've always been open to having healthy and meaningful discussions with all our stakeholders. At present, with all of us operating from the virtual world, new scenarios are emerging, which are demanding our attention. Online gaming and its influence, whether good or bad, uh, you know, is one such topic uh, which has been cropping up more often than not in many of our classroom discussions. We are delighted this evening to have in our midst an esteemed panel, uh, you know, through whom we hope to arrive at or maybe at least strive to arrive at some constructive solutions to help our students, uh, you know, balance all that, that there is on their plate in the best possible manner. Okay, my first guest, my first guest this evening is Dr. Sumit Brig. Welcome, Dr. Sumit Brig. Dr. Sumit Brig is currently the principal consultant and head of ENT and is also a cochlear implant surgeon at Max Smart Hospital in Saket, New Delhi. He is also the director for the cochlear implant program at Max Smart and has done more than 300 successful cochlear implant surgeries for deaf patients from various countries across the globe. Thank you. Thank you so much for sparing your valuable time and joining us for this discussion. Namaste. Um, our next guest this evening is Dr. Vandana Chatrath. Dr. Vandana Chatrath is a dermatologist and surgeon who has her own private practice in Delhi for the past 18 years. She graduated from Lady Harding Medical College and did her post-graduation in dermatology from Boston University. She is the proud mother of two young Shri Ramites, and today's topic is very, very dear to her heart. I'm looking forward to her sharing her insightful thoughts. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Chatra. Thank you, Rupina, ma'am. Our next guest is Miss Sonali Shankar, creative consultant at the Children's Book Trust. Miss Sonali Shankar has the family legacy to carry on being the granddaughter of the legendary Indian cartoonist, fondly known and remembered by all of us as Shankar. Passionate about publishing art literature, Ms. Sonali Shankar earned her bachelor's in psychology from Lady Sri Ram College. Uh, she also did qualitative research for three years before deciding that cutting glass was it for her and went on to enjoy being a professional stained glass artist for 15 years. On the home front, she does not classify herself as a helicopter mom to both her young children, but likes to be well involved with their academics and co-curriculars. At present, she's working towards fulfilling her grandfather's last dream to establish an international center for children. We wish you much luck for all your endeavors, Ms. Shankar, and welcome to this panel discussion this evening. Welcome. Rounding the spectrum, or rather, I would say, the other, presenting the other uh, end of the spectrum for us, we now have Mr. Akshat Rati. Mr. Akshat Rati in our midst. Welcome, Mr. Rati. Mr. Akshat Rathi uh, is a serial entrepreneur and the managing director of Nodwin Gaming, which is the premier and one of the most recognized esports companies in India. Uh, Mr. Rathi graduated from the Manipal Institute of Technology with a bachelor's in engineering. He also holds an MBA in international business from ENPC France. He merits a very special place in this panel see, since he himself has been an avid gamer since his childhood days and managed to turn his passion into a successful business endeavor. Welcome to the discussion, Mr. Rati. Welcome. Uh, we also have uh, Mr. Tathagat Datta with us. Uh, Mr. Tathagat Datta is the academic coordinator with us at Molsari for classes six to eight for ICSE. He's very tech savvy himself and knows a thing or two about gaming. So he, he seemed like a very appropriate and apt fit here in this you know, discussion this evening. So welcome, uh, Tathagat sir. Uh, also, last but not the least, a special welcome to three of our 11th standard students uh, who are joining us this evening. They are going to be part of the virtual audience for now, but we have three of them, Atrey Mukherjee, Krish uh, Bansal, and we also have our ICT head in the making, uh, Palak Jolly. They will be part of the Namaste children. They will be uh, part of the audience for now and will join us for the question and answer round. Okay, thank you children, thank you all. So we now uh, start the discussion with uh, Dr. Sumit Brig. Over to you, Dr. Mrig, to share your thoughts and your insights into online gaming and the repercussions it can have on our children. Over to you, Dr. Mrik. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Rabina, ma'am. Uh, thanks 
for the opportunity and uh, i'm sure uh, you know it's a great panel with uh, great people in this and i i think so that we should be able to bring in some light to this uh, you know new thing which has been come up in unprecedented covid times so i'm sure all of you must have heard about this name pubg in fact to be very honest and uh, i didn't knew about this the pubg about 6 months back i have never been a gaming boy and except in my childhood when i used to play mario but two of my colleagues in my department they were the people who introduced me but i have never played it and fortunately or unfortunately when i read about it and it was a shocking figure that india contributes about 30 to 35% of pubg overall downloads in the past 4 to 5 months and contributed 24% or 175 million out of pubg's lifetime 734 million downloads now that's an amazing whopping download of this game unfortunately the game has now been banned in india because it's a chinese uh, game uh, it, it was an app and with other apps which were being uh, banned but there was another game which was royal battle royal fortnite which was equally very much popular i never had a chance to play both of them fortunately my kids are not into much of gaming and uh, probably i think uh, they have learned from us and we have never been exposed but yes this is on the rise and i would say that uh, covid is an unprecedented uh, situation for all of us we are not aware when we will get free so we are all hooked in to our homes we are not going out much and this is where i think this online gaming has become a kind of a uh, uh, dictum in everybody's house to an extent that sometimes we uh, see patients in the opd and the mothers come to us and say that he is a whiz at computers and video game but he can't seem to grasp potty training so maybe this could be the level of uh, addiction to a level that the brain is suited to learn all these computer gamings but then they are not able to learn the gradual uh, trainings which which a person has to learn or a child has to learn during his growth years uh so it is not that gaming is bad i would say or it is absolutely hinders to the growth of our kids it has advantages and disadvantages so let's see what is inside it so you know so life it's not a video game there aren't a certain number of points that send you to the next level there is actually no next level if you see the bad thing is that the game ends when everybody dies in the game so this is a beautiful quote which i just found out from the internet and i think it is worth sharing here and i would just outline the benefits of gaming that why people prefer gaming in their daily routine now like uh, i heard one of the students talking about that it improves social relationship of course and that day we were when mr rathi was discussing with us that i completely agree that about 15 20 years back game used to involve either one or two people but now gaming involves more than two people maybe a group of students friends peers so definitely it, it helps in improving social relationships because when you play game you definitely come across and talk to each other you share your ideas you share your thoughts you share how you thought how you think about improving the game how you think about playing and winning this against your opponents so it does help children in building a confidence which helps them in growing up it encourages cooperation and teamwork like you know there may be a the games generally involve more than two people more than three people sometimes you have to play a, a, a role you have to play another role the other person is playing another role so it is all a sinking form where kids may enjoy that and form a teamwork and they can build that into reality in their normal lives too and it also helps in improving the visual attention and visual acuity and the reaction time i would stress on reaction time these games are such digitally uh, placed that you know they don't give you much of time to take a call either to turn left or right or fire otherwise you will be killed i have played temple run sometimes maybe 4 5 years back i have played uh, subway surfers a um, few of the times and i would say that the kids are they they do much better than i can do because their fingers can really knock these people in and out and left and right much better than what i can do and this is because they have a better reaction time than i have at my age 
it also improves fighting spirit because the more number of points you score you don't let your player die and this spirit can be shifted to your normal life to your normal fights to your normal struggle against your goals and it does help them in doing that achieving that the most important uh, thing which i believe is that it improves brain based learning and neuroplasticity now what is neuroplasticity neuroplasticity is that you tame the brain to learn things as per you give them an exposure so for example that if i play a game with my son who is about now 8 years of age he would actually pick up some of the concept far better than what i can pick up or my brain can pick up because my brain has always been meant to operate you know to operate surgeries so then his game is a naive brain and it can accommodate and acclimatize to the change which is required in learning a different type of a game so but then gaming does affect lot of things in life it does bind you to your sofa seats to your cushions to your couches and keeps you inside and nowadays you know i was searching the literature internet gaming disorder is a new term it has been coined a new term it is it should qualify as a mental disorder there are lot of articles the internet is flooded with articles with different research from various parts of the world and uh, uh, they are they are actually uh, reframing it as a gaming disorder so i searched so many articles and there was a plethora of uh, articles available on the internet from both from india and abroad but one article which i would like all parents maybe educators counselors to read is adverse psychological and physiological effects of screen time on children it's a wonderful study from jerusalem and i'm going to talk a very brief about it so side effects of gaming you know that's very important uh, i would just talk a brief on that effect on sleep so it does affect the circadian rhythm that is the cycle on which we sleep you know like night is there to sleep and the day is there to get up and do your work sleep uh, gaming does affect the circadian rhythms it decreases the sleep time and suppresses the melatonin levels so this screen exposure when we do lot of screen time it increases the melatonin level in the body to an extent that it will affect your child's sleep and the child will not sleep they will have headaches they will have lot of uh, disturbance in sleeping now it does have an impact on the cardiovascular system where obesity is known to happen because they are sedentary they sit down on their sofas they keep on playing there's a lot of addiction they don't go out they don't do any physical activities and because of obesity poor lipid profiles they get high blood pressures and the cholesterol effects start to affect and finally the cardiac system starts to affect now most important is the stress regulation which is based which is done in our body by the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system so the sympathetic arousal goes down the cortisol regulation is affected at a higher mental level and the chances of having insulin resistance where your pancreatic islets which which produce insulin to manage the blood sugar levels it doesn't happen and the child may have uh, childhood diabetes or early onset diabetes it does affect eye and the ear where effects of vision dry eyes headaches uh, trust me in the last about 6 months i've had various parents various families and kids coming to me with vertigo a spinning sensation that is because of increased screen time not only the adults but kids have started to come with vertigo and tinnitus problem because they have those headphones blocked inside for several hours they are enjoying that uh, loud sounds of fire especially in the battlefield games and we have had i've had maximum number of cases in my career with sudden sensory neural losses we have been treating in fact i'm writing a publication of covid unprecedented time affecting hearing loss a sudden loss in orthopedics because of the postural problems they have neck pains they have got uh, they have got lot of fatigability in their hand joints the fine fine movements the fine motor joints are getting affected because i'm sticking to the remote and it does affect in their overall uh, posture now the most important and the uh, severe in terms of its effect on long term personality behavior changes uh, depression suicidal behaviors aggressively attention deficit uh, hyperactive disorders and irritability Uh, let me share you a very very brief uh, profile of a child who visited the hospital he was a social addict he was an addict to games the child had to be taken to a 
rehabilitation center. It took four months for us in conjunction with a psychiatrist and a psychotherapist to take the child off because they become so addicted to games that they don't even want to go for the natural calls. They just keep on doing binge eating. And finally, in their dreams also, they get these kind of uh, activities. The brain never sleeps actually. And uh, apart from that, I would actually confess that gaming is not a crime. We all love to play games. We all sit in our family to play games, but we should not play games to an extent that your father should drag you or maybe you're not able to leave that CPU unit. So it means that if you reach a stage that your game is over. Thank you very much uh, for listening to my thoughts. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Mrik. And you know, it's 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 wonderful uh, that if we get our children and parents uh, to at least be aware of you know the harmful effects, and even if children uh, understand this, I'm sure uh, it'll make a difference. I I now uh, welcome Dr. Chatrat to please share her thoughts. Um, good evening, Rabina, ma'am, and uh, yeah. my panelists. Um, thank you very much for having me here. Um, you know, I would like a disclaimer that I think I should be here more as a parent than a <laughs> physician. Um, Absolutely. After the enlightening talk by Dr. Mrig, I think he's covered all the scientific aspects um, or the gyan on gaming um, as, as, um, as was required. Um, and, you know, I don't know if I'm at an advantage um, because of my professional uh, background being uh, science. Um, it just happens that you bring every, I mean, you bring science into every aspect of your life. And of course, uh, parenting is such a, such a difficult thing to do anyways, but I think uh, uh, you bring science into it as well. So um, I'll just give you a background briefly. Um, I don't have any slides because I, I'm talking about a personal experience um, and I'm here um, to represent more parents. I don't know if I am, um, I'm the only one here who is in this predicament, um, or are there more people like me? Not You're not the wish. only one. You're not the only one, Dr. Chatrat. So yeah, this is this is a wonderful. Please, yeah. Um, yeah. So so you know, of course, uh, COVID hit um, the world um, at the end of uh, at the end of Jan, and then by the time it seeped into India was March, and that's when the schools shut down. And um, as a parent, I had decided my son is in grade uh, seven now. Um, he's not, he hadn't turned 12 then. And the deal was that he's probably going to get a phone at the end of grade eight. Um, but I realized that, you know, he's not um, going to be able to go and interact with his friends, etc. So we decided to um, introduce, um, uh, you know, he's been playing Fortnite since uh, 2017. That's when it was launched. Um, and uh, okay some degree but you know in the day-to-day -day activity they wouldn't have time but I think COVID brought around the uh, lack of physical activity or even going out and as a result um, gaming became um, a, I would say a quintessential part of his day so till date it is about an hour to an hour and a half sometimes goes on to two hours every day um, but I brought it on um, and as uh, perhaps um, you know Akshat would it, um, enlighten us later in the uh, later in the meeting is that um, you know it is more of a social interaction and this was his one way of interacting with his colleagues and I have to tell you um, it's a joy to see him when he's gaming it just brightens him up and he's enthusiastic and fun um, and it's lovely however and again um, I, you know I would love to be uh, enlightened on this I don't know if he is on the verge of addiction or not. Um, I am very optimistic and I'm really hoping that once uh, COVID is over, he's going to go back to his soccer, uh, which he's very passionate about. And that, you know, gaming will again take a back seat. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, there's a part of me who wonders um, that what if this um, addiction, so to say, becomes an addiction. And what really defines an addiction? Is it really one and a half, two hours of playing? Isn't that fair entertainment? Don't we all watch that much TV or whatever? Uh, but you know, over the past seven to eight months, 
there are very subtle signs that I have noticed in uh, Vivan per se, who, um, uh, you know, he is, he is less um, socially interactive uh, in the sense that if there are a bunch of us sitting and, and watching a movie, he would love to watch movies with us now. He's like, well, you know what, I'd rather play a game. Um, so I'm not enjoying that aspect of him. Um, so I think somewhere down the line, um, gaming does influence. So it was brought around for his interaction with his peer group, but I think it is taking it him a little bit away from all of us. Um, the second thing is, um, which I think Dr. Marik also brought about as a point is that, you know, um, if you actually play the game, it's, it's, I mean, hats off to the, to the gamers, uh, to the, to the people who develop the game, you know, they have it figured out to the T. Um, they are accessing every aspect of the brain. It is so fast paced. Um, it is absolutely um, an adrenaline rush. It's, it's just fun. So I think uh, um, uh, with, you know, with all due credit to the kids, um, of course they enjoy it. But having said that, you know, for me, if I am, um, I don't know, enjoying a movie or something, and then suddenly I have to be told to write an article or, or read a journal uh, in dermatology, I won't be able to do it. So now, the thing I feel about gaming is that, you know, it is so high, you know, fast paced and gives them such an adrenaline rush that when they have to read a poem in Hindi, oh my God, it just takes a toll on them. So they are like, you know, where am I coming here? So yes, um, you know, gaming has been told to improve your concentration and pilots are asked to actually um, uh, play games so that it improves their hand-eye coordination, et cetera, and improves their concentration. But uh, I feel also that it takes away from your attention span because everything else seems so slow paced in life. So, um, so yes, we all understand the good aspects of gaming, but what I do not understand is that how, um, how are we going to strike a balance between our kids? And, and yes, um, once COVID is away from our lives, we will go back to our um, interaction with nature and outdoor activities. But I feel that somewhere it will leave a mark on these children. And uh, as research has shown, um, uh, you know, uh, I was uh, alluding to the talk by Professor Spritzer earlier that TSRS had organized a brilliant, brilliant talk. And he spoke so um, so um, passionately about the fact that, you know, children, whatever knowledge they gain in the first um, um, 16 years of their life, 17 years of their life is going to last them a lifetime. So their ability to absorb new length, a new um, knowledge is going to be dependent upon what they do in these 16 years. And, and for that simple reason, it, it irks me that this important time is being taken away from them thanks to COVID or whatever, or, or um, you know, that, that they are doing in terms of gaming. I'm sorry, but no matter how good a game is, even if it's Minecraft, it is not doing much for you beyond a point. It is not. And to tell me that, um, you know, one game is better than the other, I'm sure. But they're, you know, they're different faces of the same, same demon or evil or whatever. Um, what, what I'm not uh, sure about yet, and uh, I would like an input from all the other panelists, uh, is that what defines addiction? Is there a behavioral change that we should be looking for? Um, is, there a, is there a defined timeline in terms of, you know, if it's more than five hours a day, you know how um, there, there are uh, defined criteria for addiction for other things, for example, alcohol, for example, um, um, you know, drugs, um, you know, if there's somebody's having a drink early in the morning, then it's definitely a sign of addiction. So I want to know, maybe I'm not well informed as to what defines it as addiction. And then more importantly, what are we as parents meant to do? Um, you know, I, um, I have played PUBG, I have played Fortnite, a um, little okay at PUBG, but a little better at Fortnite, uh, you know, but after some time, a 12 year old doesn't want to play with his 44 year old mother i'm sorry he wants to play with his other kids you know and and i know that um, i have told him enough and you know tsrs does a super job in telling us about the perils of um, uh, you know cyberspace and so um, problems that can happen so he knows he doesn't have to play with strangers it is his um, the friends that he plays with he knows that he has to play in an open space so we know who he's playing with the kind of language they're using it's not something hidden or that he hides from us. Um, 
it's it's a you know we we talk about Fortnite. He tells me how many kills he had uh, in his particular game. So I think we're we're doing everything that that we need to do. There is no hiding from each other and stuff. But somehow I I just feel that I'm losing the battle as the day goes by, um, uh, and and um, and somehow we need to know how to strike that balance. You know, it's easier said than done because even as adults. Um, we don't, um, I mean, a lot of times, I mean, we'll get carried away and watch a movie till two in the morning and have the next patient at, at, at 9 a.m. still watch a movie. So it's hard to overcome our, um, um, you know, temptations. So to expect a child to say, oh, my one and a half hours is over and now I need to go and study geography. I don't expect that from them. So, um, so then I think it becomes our duty as uh, not just as parents, but as adults in, in a society to come up with ways and means through which we can, uh, um, I would say, um, channelize, um, you know, children's energies or, or strategies to um, engage them in more ways than one. Um, and I definitely, definitely need help with that um, amongst other parents, um, I think. Um, just to understand, maybe I'm too harsh on myself and my parenting ways. I don't know, um, but but it definitely makes me think um, uh, where we're heading, uh, what we should be doing, um, and and how how we can um, sort of work together um, as a team um, to to make sure that we are not uh, we're not letting this take over our kids' lives. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Chatrat, for your candid and very uh, heartfelt thoughts, you know. So, and you are not alone in this, let me assure you. But then, uh, you know, the question on addiction that you had, I think I will go back to Dr. Mrig at the end. But for now, uh, I'm going to invite uh, Mrs. Shankar, you know, who um, I believe has been able to manage uh, to strike a very good balance between the virtual world and actual games that her children are playing. So, uh, Mrs. Shankar, over to you for your insights. Thank you. Hi, uh, everyone. Um, um, I'm no expert, um, but uh, actually I'd uh, like to start with uh, Vandana, what you were talking about, the whole, um, you know, the aspect of addiction. I've seen addiction at close quarters um, and uh, not in gaming, in another sphere of life. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's this intense focus towards something, a stimulus, which gradually, like a, like a shadow lurks behind you and gradually begins to very slowly take over your life. And slowly, slowly, step by step, you don't know when it's happening but it begins and and a time comes when everything begins to revolve around that one stimulus and it just um uh, it's 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 an urge that's just so hard to control and it's like a it's like a it's like a monster living inside i would say that's the that's addiction and that's what we need to I would say kill before it explodes and takes over uh, our kids' lives. In this case, we are talking about, I guess, the monster being uh, online games. And uh, I am not against gaming at all. But yes, I am uh, extremely strict about the, um, the amount of time um, my kids spend on screen, um, especially on gaming. Um, so after school hours, there's a strict, put your computers off and move away from the computers, walk around, do whatever you want, just stay away from the computer. And when you want to take a break, if you want to play, the time I have set for them is half an hour come what may they don't go they cannot go beyond half an hour i'm strict and that's how it is you know love it love me love my rules that's it if you go five minutes beyond that half an hour that i've given you 
the game is gone from the computer i have done it twice i would say after which they have not broken that rule that's it i'm <laughs> i'm the demon now you see so i i have become a demon but they are okay with it they're absolutely fine they have not fought about it they have not uh, uh, they've not argued with, argued with me they they appreciate the fact that uh, they are getting to play and they enjoy it they they only play minecraft and uh, uh, i don't think they've tried any other game and they've always been obsessed with lego so i guess minecraft is an extension of lego in in some way spatial learning all that stuff and uh, they enjoy it but they do a lot of um, other stuff like um, you know they they play music they they both play instruments they, they sing together they harmonize um, uh, i just don't let them be in front of a screen that's it that's that's it they me and their dad that's a rule we have just set at home that you do whatever you want get bored learn to get bored i we don't want to hear you saying we are bored okay you're bored get bored figure out a way of entertaining yourselves don't get entertained you don't have to be entertained all the time there's the did we uh, i mean were we perpetually entertained or you know we didn't have this constant uh, when we were kids uh, we were happy just reading a book or you know running outside and climbing a tree i know times have changed things have changed but the simple things like just reading a book uh writing um you know um uh, they paint a lot they we do all kinds of um you know we do lots of arts and crafts together they enjoy that they are um, i know vivan is very um, sports inclined neil tells me a lot about him they're friends so i know he must be really missing you know his football and stuff neil is not he is he is more he is not a sporty kid he uh, you know he is um, inclined to he loves his guitaring and his uh, painting so does nitya her singing and stuff but i kick them out of the house and say run around outside you know you know just walk around just i just don't want you in front of the screen that's it period that's it that's the rule and <laughs> Uh, there's no arguing uh, it was set and they have not argued with me about it that's it uh, and uh, i guess we just have to find things other things for them to do and actually you know why do we need to find things they have to just figure it out themselves why us they have to just do it themselves why uh, and this whole thing about the the covid uh, covid being a you know this a charade for uh, having to resort to online games and you know why it's been going on forever this whole thing of online games and uh, it's been uh, screen time online games it's even um, uh, like uh, movies and tv time that's also limited in our home it's uh, typically towards the week weekend that they get to watch tv i mean a uh, longer period of time otherwise it's uh, like half an hour max uh, do other stuff eyes the i the both uh, uh, power of their eyes have gone up uh, they have dry eyes there's just uh, you know uh, headaches all these things are happening so i think the best thing we can do as parents is just paint the screen black or put a black dupatta on top of the screen after the classes are over and tell them do something else no just just be strict that's it dance sing paint kick a football do whatever put a no screen that's it i'm strict i say that so tonight so vivan and i are coming to spend a week with you aaja <laughs> i'm so many more it sounds like the perfect plan <laughs> no, why not I, i'll and handle the boys don't worry <laughs> Sunny, I'm so Sunny. I'm too much like you, so I so I love to hear that candid, uh, you know, very very strict thoughts about it, and and I truly endorse that. 
you know that i am the bad i am the bad guy in the house my wife is a very soft person she is also no, no, my husband is on the we are on the same uh, platform luckily you know so, both of them have to be we we both so, have to be together you know, you know at when it is the sleeping time see i sleep every day at 10 10:15 every day i'm off mm. i sleep for about 7 and a half to 8 hours every day because i work throughout the day i gym i do my own and uh, i completely agree that one of the parent has to be a bad guy i'm i'm not in the best of books of my kids but at least i know what i'm doing for them is going to help them in the long run so i completely endorse your thoughts and uh, the problem is what dr vandana also did mention is the balance yes is the balance <coughs> so coming to her she was talking about addiction so four hours of screen time and more somewhere classifies in different articles as addiction to screen time i'm not talking about gaming yeah. but i'm talking about screen time so if your child is spending more than 4 hours on screen i'm not talking about the online school right now because that's an unprecedented imposed thing on us but right. apart from your work activities if they are spending more than 4 hours on screen whether it is tv watching youtube social websites gaming it is seen as an addiction to screen time and more than 4 hours a day will going to have these side effects into the different systems of the body which i did enlist them so yes. maybe uh, rabina ma'am uh, we can have the last talk and then we we are open to yes. discussion yes so much to talk about it Yes, I know, and and you know, rounding it up for uh, you know, we have now the entry of Mr. Akshat Rathi to give us the perspective from the uh, you know scenario of someone who's uh, you know so closely involved with the world of gaming. So, Mr. Rathi, can we have your thoughts? Thank you, Ms. Shankar. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I had a uh, I had an idea that I would actually go ahead and talk moderation, but since everyone else thinks this is uh, what are the words I've noted, evil, monster, strict, shouldn't happen. Uh, I think I'll have to go ahead and go literally on the other side to go ahead and balance this conversation out by going and saying that you guys are absolutely unmitigated wrong. Uh, I had actually thought I would go ahead and balance this out by going and saying we have to talk about balance, but I think you guys are just going and doing it absolutely wrong. First, this conversation is uh, about uh, about gaming and not screen time. If it is screen time, then you should go ahead and really cut off your uh, children's access to YouTube or any other activities. Right? We're having a conversation around gaming. Gaming is an interactive activity which goes and happens with the screen where you do something with the screen. It is not you going and sitting passively in front of a dumb screen. right and if it is a screen time that you're there then take away the phones of the children by going and taking away social media from them because that's actually it's far more gar- garbage in your brain than which is there has far more dopamine effects uh and as far as uh, addictions goes addiction is a worldwide definition that is available and and we have some doctors here i'm i'm, I'm come from a doctor's family also that addiction is anything if your son is playing chess for 11 hours a day that's an addiction if your daughter is going and dancing for 9 hours a day that's an addiction if you are going and practicing and going to the gym for 11 for 6 hours a day that's an addiction addiction is going and going overboard with a certain activity without any repercussions or any control over yourself where you lose self control over over the the continuation of that activity and i'm so sorry to go ahead and say the taking away things from them is are you are you going and doing good for your children are you not it's an olympic sport gaming is an olympic sport you it doesn't matter whether you guys agree or not it is an olympic sport it is an it is a sport that means it's a speed activity which has physicality of your responses going and determining the result you win olympic medals for it it's like you going and saying hey my son should go ahead and do olympics then that the, why should the kid go and play football outside and as far as cognitive skills goes it is no long it is no longer a question the harvard uh, uh, medical school has come back with enough studies which is there and i have a screen i'll go ahead and share with you go watch ted you think ted is good go ahead and watch ted talks they talk to you about how cognition and and uh, spatial awareness comes in the chinese army the us army uses uh, people who can go ahead and fly predator drones to be the people to go ahead and do it it's not army pilots who do this it's people who are, have a very strong hand eye coordination that are able to go ahead and run space programs right that's that's this is reality and you going and saying my children shouldn't go ahead and go do this i think you should go ahead and be very clear about what you guys are trying to go ahead and prevent this are you prevent gaming are you preventing screen time are you preventing addictions are you prevent are you telling them they should be art people right now you know one of the, the world's 
uh, we the, the the WHO acts activity of uh, gaming addiction, which is there. WHO came up with two uh, recommendations. First, play a part together. Second, it is an addiction. They went and did both. You want to go ahead and cover one study and not cover the other other study? It's just uh, just bad science, right? You just can't go ahead and quote one part of the study because it's more convenient, and not quote the other one. What we really need to talk about is what is where children try to go ahead and make fools of their parents by going and saying, this is good for me. Kids will always take advantage of their parents to go ahead and say something is good for me when it is not good for them. They will try to go ahead and play with people. They'll try to be naughty. They'll try to go ahead and beat other people. They'll have uh, adrenaline and testosterone where they will go ahead and try and beat other people. They'll uh, try and make vulgar jokes. And that's the parenting part about balance that we need to go ahead and we need to figure out I have children too, right? And I actually don't have any problem with them. Every time my daughter comes and says, I want to play games, I said, great, I'm going to take away your YouTube time. She still gets the finite three to four hours a day in the entire day to go ahead and do anything that is entertaining to her. She can decide which parts of it which is there. She, if she says, I want to watch uh, one less Lion King and I want to go ahead and play another one hour on Baiju's Disney app so that she can actually go ahead and learn how to go ahead and do uh, 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 Vedic maths. Cool. Why not? She learns Vedic maths better this way than it is there. If someone wants to go ahead and watch uh, um, interactive uh, Khan Academy tutorials versus going and trying to go ahead and do that versus trying to go ahead and just sit and not do something on there. Great. Absolutely good. Left uh, spatial, uh, the, the big thing which we have to do is we talked about PUBG, right? India plays games on as a social activity. As a social activity is what we need to go ahead and say. Are you talking to people? Are you using bad language when you're talking to people? Sit with other people, your family to go ahead and play. If your children try to play video games, not with you, but not around you is when you have to be really careful. Because that's when they're trying to hide and do things that you won't, they know that you will not go ahead and be happy with. They're using language or they're with people or they're trying, doing things that they, they already know that is wrong. If COVID has happened. Yes, it has happened. Play, play. Gaming just came out of the closet, right? Let it be there where it is there. You, I, I think Dr. Chatra uh, said something really cool that uh, that's my daughter, by the way, she's running around and she, she feels really good. And Judy, I'm going to be uh, chatting with a couple of my friends. Is it okay? I finished some work. That's okay. She, she, Rubik's cube. You know how she learned how to solve the Rubik's cube? By going and doing those tutorials. She solves the Rubik's cube in two minutes. <laughs> now go. She's five and a half. Yeah. Now, listen, go. Seriously, go. <laughs> So, uh, and that's fine, right? People, you're absolutely right. The speed at which people are learning and, and kids are learning is phenomenally being accelerated right now. They get bored with real old ways to go ahead and do it. Is that a good thing to go ahead and do? Not my judgment to do. Some kids will embrace it. Some parents will not embrace it. It's the speed of life you want you and your family to go ahead and run. But by going and saying that someone is going fast and that's bad because I want to go slow is a very contrarian view to go ahead and say. Who are you to go ahead and say someone shouldn't go fast? Uh, Tathagat, sir, would you like to say something here? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Rati. Uh, strong views, if I may say. Uh, but uh, if, I, if I have to just to moderate this, what you said and what the other panelists said, uh, we understand that parenting is a very tough job. And that is, that is the baseline that we must establish. Uh, and given, and, and while we were uh, discussing about this and I was planning for this, you know, we have these terms called Instagram, Snapchat. The word Insta is there, the word Snap is there, which is like immediate gratification which is required for this generation. Okay, and how do they learn? And if, if you give the games to them and, you know, at any, given the COVID situation, they're stuck at home. Okay, I know that, you know, PS4 sales have increased by 60, 70%. All these data that's there, but how as a parent, should we actually have that conversation with our children that, okay, this is what I expect from you. And this is where, at the other end of the spectrum, parents might think that this is addiction, but this is not an addiction, but how do we channelize that energy into gaming as a social activity, as you pointed out? 
was actually, you know, about to go ahead and close my argument here, which is there. And th thanks, Athagat, for actually going and showing. Can I share my screen with you guys one second, which is there? I'd Absolutely. love if you guys can go actually look at some of this, which is there. I just threw this together. Um, so these are just five, six resources I often recommend for a lot of people to go ahead and say, let's just get rid of some of these things. Uh, this one is, uh, so, uh, is a game which talks about grief, about going and dealing with death. Okay, and that happens, which is there. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a person who's got cancer. This is actually a person who lost his daughter, who made this game, um, to cancer. And he's gone through this modes of grief and how to go ahead and build stuff together and, and, and how to deal with grief. These are two TED Talks that talk about what is the cognition and how to go ahead and be, make your life actually better. This is something how video games actually tell people how to tell stories better. And this has shown that empirically people who go through this at Oxford actually write much more engaging stories for people in the future. Go ahead and do. Uh, this is a gay lady by the name of Jane uh, McNoggle. Uh, she goes and writes how gaming actually makes a better world and is actually contributing to uh, COVID research. And the last one, which is there, which is I often like to go ahead and recommend, gaming makes you smarter. Social media, media makes you stupider. So <laughs> sometimes we make mistakes between screen time and Instagram and Snapchat and gaming and, and we have to focus on gaming, right? About I agree with that. Mr. Adi, I would <laughs> agree on gaming over social media any day. Uh, so, and I and we often agree over, and we often go ahead and make that recommendation. Gaming, oh, gaming is interactive entertainment, right? And, I, and YouTube is passive entertainment. Interactive entertainment still beats passive entertainment. However, the big question which is there is how much entertainment should you be doing yes, in your life? Exactly. How much that is, is the much? how much is that? And that's the one we need to go ahead and talk about. Entertainment will still be between two and four hours a day. Whether you go or play outside uh, football, whether you're chatting on your phone with your friends, whether you're on Instagram, whether you're watching YouTube, or you're, whether you're playing a video game, which is there. Balance, balance that entertainment time. I think that entertainment time in the last decade has gone from three hours to seven hours a day. That's, That's right. the fundamental problem which we are talking, trying to go ahead and solve for. Gaming is just one part of entertainment and uh, some part of it, will, just like some part of YouTube will actually make you better, right? And it's not just cat memes all the time. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, I think the, the part of the debate here is how much is too much gaming? Yes. Good or bad at no point of time, you know, even in our discussions in classrooms, nobody debates it's good or bad, but how much is too much? You have parents playing, but then how do you stop? Like Dr. Chatrat said, how do you stop, uh, you know, a PUBG and then switch over to a Hindi poem? You know, th that needs to happen too. If the children are managing to maintain the balance, yes. And of course, the question of cyber safety, you know, that hovers, you know, because at times uh, parents uh, know who they are playing with, but at times no. And I've, I've had, we, and again, these concerns are coming to the fore because they have been brought to us by parents and children. Again, you know, which is why the need for such conversations. So I'll just uh, open up the question first going alphabetically let's start with Atrey. Atrey your questions to uh, the panel here. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much uh, for giving us like this talk. It was really informative. Uh, I had a question for Mr. Rathi. So this is regarding cybersecurity only. So uh, gaming does open up channels of communication um, between people and people who they've never met before, right? So while it does have its positives, it can be extremely dangerous. And so how do we ensure children are protected from predators who might be interacting with them, you know, while they are playing these games on public forums, right? Because most, a lot of games have public forums and private forums and like uh, children do participate in games in these public forums as well. So how do we regulate that? Brilliant question. Um, so first age ratings. Uh, we don't actually have to go like we should. There are age ratings to games. Every single game out there has an age rating. Follow the age rating. There's a reason why that age rating was thought of by people to go ahead and do right. It's just like going and saying, can I go ahead and watch a adult movie uh, when I'm 12 years old? Of course you can, but you shouldn't. And someone in, in your life should be actually saying, no, you shouldn't because you're not mature enough to go ahead and understand those implications of, of that uh, language or whatever. So PUBG, for example, if you actually look at the app download page says, you shouldn't be playing it before the, below the age of 16. 16 is the PUBG official age. Pay attention, like parents should read the label behind a, yes. like, <laughs> it's like going and drinking a can of soda, right? If you should know how many calories are in it and, and that, that it's bad for you. 
and and if your parents still let you drink soda and you drink 20 cans of soda a day there is a problem here uh, so that's the first second um, you have cousins you'll have friends who are much more younger uh, for example for people below the age of 10 my daughter for example cannot go ahead and go to uh, any game platforms that have public conversations so for example there is a game called roblox in roblox you cannot go ahead and type you can't say anything you try type anything really bad it's built around such strong safety features you're still playing with strangers but they can't type they can't chat they can't do anything you still socially interact with them and they can say things to you like hi uh, hello this is cute they are predefined formats that they can go ahead and think of them like stickers that are already available which is there but you can only talk through pre-approved stickers and and that's fine that's that's another good way to go ahead and talk about it and the last one which is there which is very important is uh, go to people who really care about security and such as apple does better than android right apple security and and its ways to go ahead and interact with kids is far more robust than an open android ecosystem the open internet's the worst like youtube just just like youtube is, shouldn't be there for young kids as such because it just is not filtered properly amazon does something called amazon uh, free time far more better ways to go ahead and do it pre-approved apps with pre-approved systems to go ahead and do this the world has thought about this look and these are resources that are available and we're happy to go ahead and share it with with the with your team and everyone else also because there are some things that are good there are some things that are not anything you don't think is good think of it as bad and don't do it so having a whitelist and this little walled garden till a certain maturity age is great from the ages of 12 to 15 chat with your parents and because your parents and yes the parents need to double time right now to go ahead and understand new things also because this isn't something that they know how to go ahead and do five years ago so they're learning it as we are going and and sometimes they have jobs to go ahead and talk about it so the more you talk about it rather than your peers it's better because your parents won't know some of the your peers will do whatever that, that they think is right you know the, uh, first it was Facebook and then it'll be in 10 years time. I don't know. It will be Facebook or it'll be something else, which is there. That's fine. So just, there are really good resources out there where we can get behind this. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rati. Uh, Krish, can we have your question? Hi, thank you all for your insight. They're really key. And I like, I really love the broad range of opinions and stances. So I think my question is to all panelists here keeping in mind uh, Mr. Rati's uh, points as well. Like there are softer parents as you have uh, termed them. So how do you prevent, uh, how, or how do you suggest parents prevent students from, uh, or ch their children from going overboard with spending too much time on gaming or screen time per se? Well, like for example, two hours may be good enough, but five hours is a little too much as they start to neglect their responsibilities as well. I've talked Dr. a lot Brigg, about, how about like someone else. Uh, sorry, yeah, Dr. Brig, yes, please. So, uh, so I think very valid uh, point made by Mr. Akshat Radhi. And uh, let me tell you that uh, I completely agree to this, that what you can fix is the total time of entertainment. You can't distinguish that uh, this, you will not play games and you will only watch YouTube and you will not watch YouTube and you will only be on Instagram. So what I generally do, like what Mr. Radhi said, I, am a, I completely believe in Apple software. And uh, so my daughter has an iPad and that iPad is logged in through my wife's account. My son has an iPad that is logged into my account. And I am the master where we have a family, uh, you know, system where I regulate all the accounts in the iCloud. So whatever game is downloaded on any of the iPads that is automatically downloaded on my iPad also. So I know what system they are downloading. Now, what I have done through my screen, through my iCloud controls and iPad, I have restricted their screen time. Now, how this screen time is regulated, that it's a password, which only I know and my wife knows. And now if you go to an iPad, there is a screen time which you can fix separately for education, for entertainment, for gaming, for YouTubes and everything. So we have a pact with the kids, both, both the kids. My daughter is in class six in IGCSC and my son is in class three. Both of them are in Sh uh, Shidiram. And uh, what we have had a pact that both of them have only two hours of complete screen time. It's up to them. And we have regulated that what games you can play. 
like you know uh, mr rathi clearly said that there is an age bar restriction so it's very important that before you download you or they download these games you should know what they are downloading and whether this is app for the age or not so what we have done we have separate set of uh, timings for the weekdays and for the weekends like weekdays are something where no television is allowed after dinner the movie time is only with the family on the weekends where we watch together and trust me we all watch series on netflix on amazon prime but we don't watch separately we watch with our kids together so that we socially interact also like we 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 cook good food my daughter is a excellent chef she loves doing her exercise while she is watching the australian uh, chef master you know the kid master so she is skipping and she is watching that she has she has made herself so she is making use of her media which she likes she is learning cooking also she is having a screen time and she is doing exercise so we have a separate pack like if you want to read a book on a social platform then that is also a part of your entertainment it can't be taken as a separate time and then you say that you have not played games today so everything comes in two hours whether you watch a movie whether you play a game whether you uh, read your book the e pdf book or on any uh, or a uh, reading a book on kindle so these times are defined what i can suggest parents very important whatever needs to be done please ask your kids to do it in the day time please tell them post dinner nothing goes only book reading book reading means hard copy book reading because of this night visions and the uh, night factors where the ipads and the kindles have they put lot many strain however good they may sound that they don't affect your eyes they do cause dry eyes because once once everybody has slept in the house there is nobody to stop you so what i do with the screen time after 30 minutes the screen goes blank so they can't do anything so once the time limit has been exceeded they can only come to you and ask for an extension of the time limit so this we have set separately for the weekdays and for the weekends thank you thank you thank you dr amrit uh, and you one know more uh, thing. one yeah. more thing i i'll sure. tell you sure please check the cookies and please check the browsing history which they have done they will not know many of the kids i i know class 11 and 12 can know but trust me there are ways you can control that there are ways where you can go and check what all sites they have visited and if you feel some unexplicit content has been downloaded please go and talk to them that this is not for you trust me my daughter my daughter knows everything about it and she tells me that i think these may be a restricted site let's go to some other site so i think the only way to control this is to gain the confidence of your kids that they should come to you for every small thing rather than you showing them away and telling them you can't do this and you can't do this of course there are times when you have to be harsh on them but the only way to control i would not say control the only way to gel with this generation is to be their friend and nothing else of course one of them have to be a little stricter one so that depends upon you know i am the stricter one but then of course i am a friend to my uh, son and my daughter where they know that papa is going to allow it sure wonderful thank you and i think uh, now more than ever it, it times demand more conversations more conversations and you know the, the children need i mean i think the parents also need to have their voice heard increase their visibility for the children you know so okay uh, palak i think we'll be running out of time so palak let's have the last question from you and then uh, we'll have sagat sir wrap it up yeah All right, sure. So, first of all, I must tell everyone and a very good evening to all of you. I just wanted to say that I found all these talks so insightful, and I'm sure that all of us will benefit out of it. The conflicting viewpoints they're very interesting, and you know, I'm sure that all of us will advantage out of it. Um, my question is slightly different. Um, I'm a strong advocate for women in technology, and you know, I have tried certain games as well. Uh, but what I believe is that media is intrinsically linked with gaming. and at times uh, through games hypersexualization of women can occur for example male avatars in games are often shown as macho men or uh, but female avatars are literally objectified and this happens a lot so uh, and i speak from experience having played games myself uh, to all of you as parents 
how do you ensure that games do not affect the psyche of your children in terms of how they treat women and also uh, to especially to mr rathi as a game developer how do we ensure that gaming in the future remains a source of entertainment and not impact the psyche of the child what are the responsibilities of game developers and how do we improve that situation so if i could have everyone's opinion on that thank you i like the short answer is you should try out a game called raji uh, it's just come out about a couple of uh, about 10 days ago it's r a j i it's made by an indian company it's about this little girl in india uh, we it came out around uh, diwali to go ahead and tell young kids about the histories of the vedas she's a sister who's lost her brother golu uh, which is there and it's a triple a rated title uh, so that means it's as good as a destiny or a uh, street fighter or any other game in the world which is there you should go check it out or you should check out some video about it also um, this is something that actually came out uh, uh, and this is a legacy problem the industry's been able trying to go ahead and solve for the last 20 25 years uh it's gaming mostly started off as a boys club uh, out of japan um and and it came from a japanese manga as uh as the story which is there and and japanese culture is extremely patriarchal in terms of that kind of a depiction in most of the comics that is there um and that has been the legacy forever right and the other industry that was also similar to this is the car industry you should go ahead and see how car industries go ahead and sell new cars right there is always going to be a car model uh that is going to be a, and who normally be a woman who will be standing next to it uh, to go out and try and sell a car i have no idea why what a girl has to do with selling a car but that's just how that objectification and that uh, uh and that view point has coming in it's changing over the last five uh, over the last 5 to 7 years you'll see that lots more women who have got into game development as that they have got into hollywood uh, there are now more directors for example the uh, uh, netflix series that was recently done most netflix series now uh um uh, uh, especially in, as netflix came in they said 20 to 25% of its directors and producers will be women so they have gone back and gone, uh, gone and done that and that's the knock on effect that you're actually going and seeing in gaming uh to come down but what it really needs is people to tell the stories so gaming is nothing about ex- anything else except about the stories right so if if more people come and tell better stories and the stories protagonists are not just objectified women but strong women that are required that have a brain and and have values i think that's the stories which we need and i think that's the stories which we which people behind like especially people like us we definitely get behind thank you thank you dr rathi i think dr sorry dr rathi i said mr rathi uh, dr chatrat over to you i just wanted to um, add a point to um, what palak said i think it's a great observation and and you know somehow uh, um I don't think I'm a feminist but I'm I'm all about equality for sure and it used to bother me that you know um uh, that that you know uh, like I used to beat all the boys uh, when I was 13 or 14 at car gaming game uh, and and there was no question about it and uh, and I just didn't understand why there would be a problem and in fact uh, my daughter wants to play Fortnite I'm just holding it off but you know one of the things um I'm like like i said before i'm not against gaming it's the timing that's that's my problem um fortnite for example has these skins right and they the the skins where you know somehow my son always picks the one uh, which has like the skin is a woman and what the game has done has made those skins inherently stronger faster with better arms um and so all of these guys like to you know believe that you know their a uh, protagonist is is a woman who is going to perform better so somewhere down the line you know fortnite also engages the latest rap artists etc and has the the best music and so people are aware i mean the kids are aware of what's what's good out there in terms of music in terms of songs that have a purpose and stuff so i think i, I like i said these guys who are building these games are spot on they know exactly what which nerve to hit but i think this i will give them credit for they they are trying to um at least reduce the gender gap by introducing um you know skins which are not male dominated only um and you know there will be this female with long blonde hair uh, uh, with you know um in in um, uh, in camo gear and uh, and she's she's uh, out there you know playing the game so i think that's that's something that has to happen a little more thank you thank you dr chatrat uh so i think over to tathagata thank you children thank you for those very insightful questions and uh, tathagata 
Yeah. I'd like now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, the panelists. Thank you, Rabina, ma'am. Thank you, children, for joining us here today. I think some of the takeaways that we can have from this discussion is that gaming is here to stay. It is how we engage with this that sort of defines as a parent how our children are going to view gaming and do we see it as entertainment? Do we see it as a, a sort of antidote to boredom? Uh, it cannot be an antidote to boredom, as uh, Ms. Shankar pointed out, that yes, you have to tell them, empower them, find their own thing. That's one sort of uh, takeaway that we can have. A bit of tough love also help that, okay, we set down these rules, we have to follow these rules as well. Uh, so it is a balance, a balance which all parents have to strike at a, to a certain extent, we cannot be 100% sure that we are, we are successful, but we have to sort of make an effort towards that. But again, I think we have to build a trust with our children, talk to them, be mature with the conversation that we want to have with them, because they're all, they're all growing up, they know what is happening in the world around. And sometimes it's the children who are more insightful, they come up with queries which we sort of don't know the answers to. So let's engage with our children and have a better conversation with them. And I think explore beyond the world of PUBG and Fortnite. There are n number of games that are available. And when we're engaging with it, it's not only the children who are engaging, but we should engage as a family as well. So that will again, build a sense of trust. I think. So thank you once again, thank you for being here. It was very engaging and thank you everyone. Namaste. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Let's keep the conversations going. Thank you.